Hello, dear friends. How are you all doing? My name is August. This is Cozy Rosie Reads, and today we are doing our February TBR. Can we believe we're here already? The sun is so perfectly like setting on us right now. I just thought it was like the perfect moody time. Fresh flowers are in David finally, so you all don't have to look at those crinkly gross ones that have been sitting there for like four months. They're beautiful, they're still trying to bloom. And this is the first time since I started my TBR jar challenge that we have a completely full jar. So now we know that it takes about six months or so to get through this entire thing. And now it's time to use all the prompts in here. It's a fresh, clean slate. We're gonna pick some prompts. We're gonna pick 10 prompts for my TBR jar. If you're new here, I have all of these different prompts and challenges that help me pick and build my TBR for the month. I pick 10. It's very rare that I get through all 10 in one month, but it still gives me an option to choose how I'm feeling for my next read. I love that. I just have a very wide variety of books and genres. I have so many different genres. Let's move some knickknacks real quick, actually. And I have such a wide eclectic variety and taste, and this is the perfect way to condense that variety into 10 books for the whole month. And then I get to choose what I want to read from there. So I hope you all are doing really well. My favorite video of the month. Let's go ahead and dive in. Winston is sitting right here by me. So I'm scared that if I set this down, he's going to bat it off. But we'll see how he does. He's just loving the sunshine right now. All right. Oh, full jar, friends. Full jar. Prompt number one. Oh, there's so many to choose from. Oh, okay. I got one. First prompt of February is, I had the same problem last time. Why didn't I fix it? It's either a U or a V. U. That's definitely a U. Do I have any books that start with the letter U? <laughs> so with letters, it's the first letter of said book title. Um, U, that's a hard one. Do I have any? <laughs> Oh, I do. I have a U. It's a very new book. So if you're watching this right now, pretend you haven't seen it because I'm going to be doing a huge winter book haul because I have gathered so many new books in my life recently, as you can probably tell. Like I just have so many. Um, and obviously I'm most excited to read those because they're newest to me and I feel really inspired by them. You know, when you just like find a new book while thrifting or something and you're like, I want to read this immediately, but you're like, ah, my backlist. Um, so the book I have that actually starts with you is Underwater to Get Out of the Rain, A Love Affair with the Sea by Trevor Norton. This is a memoir, biography, beautiful illustrations in here, and it's about um, an entrancing celebration of the creatures, the science, and the wonders of the ocean by the marine biologist known as Bill Bryson Underwater. Oh my gosh, so it's it's his own personal life, but his love affair with the ocean. So there is dialogue in here. There is oh, these beautiful, again, these illustrations. I love things with seas, oceans, creatures, underwater aquatic elements in such good condition and I found it used. So um, this is just all about his life. It's blurbed on the back by the Los Angeles Times as he captures these wild places in all their ancient glory. Landscapes filled with fairies and hags, many in modern dress. Lovers of the sea, this is from the London Times, and sands will be swept away. And Norton writes so lyrically that you can taste the salt of his bonding experiences with the oceans. Oh, this sounds so freaking romantic. I love oceans and stuff. Like it's, the ocean scares me so much, but like literature that follows oceans and seas and ships and everything. It's, it's amazing. So yeah, it talks about his studies at Liverpool University and mermaids and sea monsters and the history of the ocean and the discovery of the ocean through biology and science, but also as a, as a memoir. I just opened to a page that says, in all senses, the melancholia, worms and putrefaction were washed away with the tide. This gave nature's seaside sanatorium the edge over inland spas. How, oh, oh, I feel like I would have saved this book for summer, but in February, I love the month of February. I find it very romantic. We're settling into winter still. There may be some hints of spring, like right now, this beautiful sunlight coming in. It just feels so romantic to me. And I feel like I really romanticize my life even more in February. February is usually when I wanna go to more art museums and study art history. And I just wanna like 
envelop myself in learning and history. I don't know why, it's just a phase I've noticed in my life in February. I just get so into like self-discovery and discovery of the world around me. So this is perfect underwater to get out of the rain. I'm so excited. The physical format of this book is so delicious too. It's just like a perfect like block, you know? Like, you know what I'm talking about? Like the perfect size of a book. It's girthy and soft and anyway. First book of February. I could not be happier. I can't believe I had a you book. <laughs> Prompt number two. Oh my god. <gasps> it flew out. Did you all see that? If this one flew out at me. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? I always get like just so amped up on this video, friends. If this is like your only time that you watch my channels with a TBR jar challenge, you are getting me at my like peak hyperactivity, my peak like excitement and over gesticulation. Like I just get so thoroughly geeked about picking books and touching all of them and seeing what's on my show. <laughs> so maybe watch some other videos if you think I'm a little too hyper with this one. Ooh, a book you want to read. <laughs> no wonder that one flew out it was just like girl you got all these new books like pick one you want to read I have so many I have so many I want to read uh, and I kind of don't want to pick a book that I recently got because I really want to save some of these for a book haul but there's one that I just picked up today that's really intriguing me uh, I went thrifting today whoops hi honey did you hear that squeaky mew hi squeaky mew hi Mo? Hi, baby. Hello. Hi, honey. You're dirty. You need a bath. Screw it. I'm going to pick the book I picked up today because I, I really do want to read it. I'd never heard of it before I saw it while thrifting today. And that is Lempriere's Dictionary by Lawrence Norfolk. Beautiful cover. This is the spine. Um, so it doesn't have any information on the back. It is pretty dense. Like, look at that. That's tiny. It's very dense. It's very long, but that font size, wow, it's so small. Um, but it says on the back, reviewed by Kirkus Reviews, deftly merging history, classical illusions, and fabulous fantasy in a style that merits comparison to Dickens as well as Gilbert and Sullivan. A delight for any reader eager to be overwhelmed by a story. Um, so when I looked this up on Goodreads, it's about this man in the, what, maybe 1600s? I could be botching this so much because I only found it on Goodreads and just briefly looked over it before I was like, uh, yes. And he's compiling a dictionary of medieval or mythic folklore. And in doing so, he ends up uncovering a like 120 year old kind of curse on his family. And it kind of sounds a little like Illuminati-esque, like nobility and um, that dark kind of magical realism fantasy. I honestly have no idea what to expect, but it sounds so cool. And then look, there's even like some music notes in here. It just sounds so gothic kind of like dark academia almost a little bit like just very gothic dark macabre really bizarre surreal magical realism everything i love and then very intellectual at the same time so this sounds like it could be so much fun i i'm genuinely excited for this but it does look very very dense um i have no idea but it has really wonderful reviews on goodreads this first chapter is called caesarea and i don't know like the the first few sentences are beautiful. It's about reading by oil lamp, a book light open and soft yellow light. Oh, it's just romantic, romantic, moody, intellectual, scholarly, dark fantasy. I, I'm totally down for this. It sounds awesome. So I'm gonna add this one, Lempriere's Dictionary. Prompt number three. Gosh, there's so many in here, like so many prompts. Oh, <laughs> oldest release. I have some classics on this shelf, okay? This is, yikes. Oldest release, oh my god. Okay, well, to start with, I'll start pulling, pulling out my classics, that's for sure. So we have Mrs. Dalloway, Virginia Woolf, copyright 1925. We have Norwegian Folk Tales. Oh, who remembers this? Who remembers this one? I'll throw the video down below if you're curious. It's my Thrift With Me video. It was originally published in four booklets between 1841 and 1844. So 
So that's definitely older than Mrs. Dalloway. I honestly have no idea when Alice's Adventures in Wonderland was published. Now I'm just curious. Lewis Carroll. 1865. Other classics that she has. What other classics does she have? I have Peter Pan. 1911. I have At the Back of the North Wind, George MacDonald. It looks like a 60s cover, but I have no idea when it was originally published. Okay, reproduced 1963, but the author was born between 1824 and 1905. Um, Edith Wharton's like 1920s. We have The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham. Uh, this one says 2015, but that's not accurate. I'll have to look at this one. I feel like it's not going to be as old as these 1800s ones, but you never know. Um, okay, Wuthering Heights, Emily Bronte, 1847. So still younger than the folk tales. I'm not going to be reading this this month, but in February. <laughs> but just for curiosity's sake, Moby Dick, Herman Melville. Herman Melville 1819 to 1891 but doesn't say when it was originally published so okay, these are books I'm gonna actually have to look into real quick and figure out like what is actually oldest um other than that <laughs> I say I'm still reading Middlemarch but I haven't gotten any further I am so close to halfway in this one and I would love to finish it because I am enjoying it it's just not you know uh serialized in 1871 so it's still younger than potentially these. So let me Google real quick and see see what happens, what is actually oldest, and we'll figure that out real quick. Okay, I am back. Sorry if the perspective changed. I found some things out. Wind in the Willows was not published until 1905, so it does not count. Moby Dick was published 1851, and then at the back of the North Wind was published 1868, which means our clear winner is the Norwegian Folk Tales by as Bjorsen and Mo. So it's a collection of Norwegian folk tales. I'm so excited for this. There are so many in here. So many. I can't, they didn't number them. But there are a lot. Some include The Boy Who Met the Trolls in the Heddle Woods. Some of my favorites include um, Butterball, The Ash Lad Who Made the Princess Say You're a Liar, Good Day Fellow, Axe Handle, White Bear King Valamlin, Taper Tom Who Made the Princess Laugh, uh, yeah, I feel like this could be fun. Maybe I read like one little one every other day or so. There's some really cool illustrations in here too. I love the old etching style of the illustrations too. It's just so stunning. Look, we got some little rats, little mice. I'm excited to add this one. It's little, it's not so daunting. I like this stack, friends. Let's put some of these back here. Bookshelves are so stuffed. Okay, we're kind of racing against the clock because my camera is going to die. Prompt number four. We're not. <laughs> we're not. Longest book, okay? Longest book. You, 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 why? August, why? Um, that is clearly gonna be middle March. Is February going to be the month that I finish it? Because I'm coming up on a year since I started this book. I started it in March. Hello, sweet thing. <laughs> He's stealing the show, you little ham. Look at you. What are you doing, Bubba? Clearly the longest book. Grand total of 794 pages. And I am on Last I Left It Off. Why are you eating my hair? Last I ended off was page 330, so still still got a ways to go, but I made it this far. Is February going to be the month that I do it? Because March is going to be a full year. We're going to add it to the pile until it's done. I am enjoying it. It's just like when I have so many other like shorter, more fun books, I'm going to prioritize those instead of this one, so it's fine. <laughs> Prompt number five. Five star prediction. I get to pick my own book and a five star prediction? Okay. <laughs> For this, I really need to pick like a book that's not brand new to me because I'm just going to get too excited for the brand new books, but I am excited for my brand new books, obviously. My brand new to me books. Most of them are thrifted. Um, let's take a peek here. What do I think is going to be a five star? Ooh, okay. I think I'm going to pick this one actually. And that is Mr. Fox by Helen Oyeyemi. This would be my second uh, Helen Oyeyemi book I've read. 
Mr. Fox follows fairy tale romances end with a wedding. The fairy tales that don't get more complicated. In this book, celebrated writer Mr. Fox can't stop himself from killing off the heroines of his novels, and neither can his wife Daphne. It's not until Mary, his muse, comes to life and transforms him from author into subject that his story begins to unfold differently. So Mr. Fox is offered a choice. Will it be a life with the girl of his dreams or a life with an all-too-real woman who delights him more than he cares to admit? Oh, I love Helen Oyemi's writing style so much, and this cover is just so divine to me. Love this cover. I loved White is for Witching. It's the other Helen Oyemi book I read. I read it last year in January. Loved it so much. It's so bizarre and surreal, and I, I really, really enjoy her writing style. So I'm gonna add Mr. Fox, because I do feel like this is a five-star prediction. I already know I love her writing style, so this is a definitely a pretty easy five-star prediction for me. So we're gonna add this one. Oh, the stack is delicious. Like, those colors. I just get so geeked out. It's all like candy to me. I want to eat it all. Okay, prompt number six. Ooh, historical fiction. Again, we're just playing with the vibes I was telling you all. I just love reading like historical fiction and all of that kind of stuff when I'm in this like winter season. I, I love historical fiction in the winter. It is just my freaking jam. Okay, what do we have though? I have several books that I want to read, but again, they're all from like my brand new book, so we're just gonna see. Okay, so I have two again, and again, they're both books that I recently thrifted because I have just been picking up books lately at thrift stores that I genuinely want to read in the exact season I'm in right now, and in the exact phase of my life I'm in right now, which is like gothic, historical fiction, a little bit more classic energy, and they're very different though, but beautiful freaking covers. So first we have Queen Victoria Demon Hunter by A.E. Murat. Look at that cover! It is historical fiction. It's London, 1838, and Queen Victoria is crowned, and then uh, demons come up, but her thoughts are occupied by Prince Albert. It just sounds fun. Like, I mean, with this stack, like, they are kind of a little dense, maybe, and they won't be as, like, fun and rompy, so I feel like this would be good for my soul and my heart and my brain, you know? But again, this cover is just everything to me. It's just beautiful. And then we have The Rose Garden by Susanna Kearsley. This is a, a book that takes place, I feel like it could be modern day, and it's this woman who comes back to her old house on the Cornish coast, and then she finds mysterious voices and hidden pathways that sweep her not only into the past, but also into the arms of a man who is not of her time but Ava must confront her own ghosts as well as those of long ago. So she's in this old house and I read the first like little chunk of this book and it talks about how the house itself is like this gothic fairy tale house, like this giant rolling estate. We know we love the gothic atmosphere. Um, so I, I feel like this would just be like a really romantic moody time, but I'm, mm, I'm really debating between these two, really debating. So I'm gonna put both of them to the side for now how stunning both of these are. This is all entirely such a mood right now. Like I can't express how moody this stack is to me. I'm gonna put both of these to the side and see how the remainder of the TBR goes and then pick at the end. That's what I do when I'm feeling extra indecisive. So that's what we're gonna do. In the meantime, prompt number seven, one word title. One word title. Okay. We have Candide by Voltaire. Um, I can't remember if I ever read this in school. It's so tiny. I feel like this would just be a, an easier one because it is pretty short and small. And I've always wanted to read it, but I honestly can't remember if I've ever read it before. So it might be a reread, might not. I don't know. Okay, we have Legacy and Luster. Both feel like summer books to me, so I'm gonna say no for now. Mother Lunge, also another summer book. Oh, uh, Piranesi. I kind of want to wait a little bit on that one with this stack. It's a little too moody. I just want something either short or fun right now <laughs> with this stack. I feel like I'm gonna want to spice up some of these reads with like a short fun book. Pond, that is gonna be a spring or summer book for me for sure. I'm so excited. Claire Louise Bennett, very excited for that one. I think it's gonna have to be Candide because the only other ones I have that are one words are like Clade, Legacy, and Luster. Um, Clade sounds awesome. I still want to read it. I'll pull it out so you all can see. Still think this one is gonna be really gorgeous and fun, but I feel like this is gonna be a little bit more fun, short, rompy, and this is a literary fiction that might 
be very bittersweet. I'm so excited to read this. Look at that sun coming in. Ah, I still really want to read this though. I mean, all of these books, I still really want to read them, but it, I have to think about what's already on my stack. Ugh. Come on. If my camera dies because you won't go in, I'm gonna be mad, 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 mad. Go. So I think it's going to be Candide because of this current stack of what's what the frick is happening. But this reads, after being caught kissing the Baron's daughter, Kunegande? I'm going to have to look up how to pronounce that name because otherwise I'm going to be reading it wrong in my head the whole time. Gullible Ingenue Candide is evicted from the castle where he lives to find himself wandering a world awash with disease, injustice, and slaughter. Can he reconcile what he sees and experiences with the optimistic philosophy of his mentor, Pengloss, that they live in, quote, unquote, the best of all possible worlds, end quote, and that, quote, everything is for the best, end quote. I'm excited for this. I've heard actually really good things about this one. I feel like it's going to be really funny. And again, we don't have an originally published date, which is frustrating because this is an oldie. Um, introduction, let's see. Oh, published in 1759. Oh, wait, shit. <laughs> so then this is older than I didn't even Norwegian folk tales. <laughs> okay, well, shut up. Oh, not you. So um, this is gonna have to go for my oldest book. It was hiding. It's so small. It was just hiding and straight up chilling up here. Um, sorry, Norwegian folk tales. So this is actually the oldest book, so we're going to pop that there, and then Middlemarch, because that came out 1759. That's almost 100 years earlier than the Norwegian Folktales was originally published. Okay, so one word title, I guess we're going to have to go with Clade. So this is, it takes place on a beach in Antarctica, and it's about scientists, and it talks about his family and battling to survive an apocalyptic storm. Um, and then like beekeeping and the modern civilization that's going downhill. Like it just sounds so all over the place. Um, but it is a literary fiction, but look at how spread out it is. This is a stunning, again, this, this texture is gorgeous. Close up of the cover here. This has been on my TBR in the past. So will this actually be the month in February that I read it? I feel like it could be a very good February book. It's opening page is um, about the coldness of being in Antarctica which is my favorite. I love reading wintry, snowy books while it's wintry and snowy. It's just my favorite literature. I always read my favorite books of all time in the winter because they're just so much more moody, you know? They're just moody and darker and more atmospheric than the books I read in summer, which I tend to like light and fruity and fluffy and poppy kind of books in the summer. So we're gonna do that, Clade. Okay, prompt number eight. Wow, what a turn of events, friends. Middle grade. Oh, you know what? This is going to be easy. I'm going to do Cheese Sweet Home Volume 2. I read the first book of this series just last week. Loved it. It is cute. It's a little manga series by Konami Kanata. It is so cute. It just follows this cute little cat named Chi, and he's separated from his mom, his mama cat, and then this family with a young boy take him in and it's translated from Japanese. The first book was translated by Ed Chavez. What about this one? also Ed Chavez. And um, it's just little vignettes of Chi learning to be a house cat with his family. And it's so cute. It's so adorable. There's hardly any dialogue. And it's a fully colored graphic novel, which I love. So it's this cute little manga series about a cat. So middle grade, very easy to read, so accessible. I'm gonna add this. It's cute. I don't know where I'm gonna find all the other books in this series because I've only ever seen the first two for sale. Um, I don't know if there are more. I'm assuming there are. So we're gonna add that. That's gonna be a nice little light fluffy one for in between all these books. We have a lot of C's going on too. Candide, Clade, Cheese Sweet Home. I like it. Prompt number nine. We're nearing the end already. Uh, random page number generator. Come on. Okay, you know what? The jar has been really nice to me so far. So it would, it would do this to me. So basically I have to pull up my laptop, which is right here. And we have to pull up a random number generator. So minimum is gonna be, I don't know. I have some short, short, short books on here. So let's just do like a hundred pages and we'll do maximum. Let's be kind to ourselves. We're gonna do 300, generate 204. Okay, 
So I'm actually gonna pause the video now because I'm really scared my camera's gonna die and I'm gonna try and find a book that's as close to 204 pages as possible. So I will be right back. Okay, so after scouring my shelves and kind of tearing them apart a little bit, I found The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison is only two pages off from 204. It is 206 pages. I found so many that were like 198, 197, but the bluest eye was the closest to our random number generator. So I'm gonna be adding this to my TBR pile. I'm so excited for another Toni Morrison book. I'm wanting to read more by her, so this is the perfect time to do it. So hopefully I'll actually get around to reading it because I tend to not prioritize Toni Morrison's books when they're on my TBR. I don't know why. I get intimidated by it for some reason now, which is just silly because I love her writing style so much but it intimidates me i don't know why we've talked about this because her other book beloved is on my january tbr and have i gotten to it yet no i'm so sorry i haven't gotten to it yet so this is gonna go on to my february tbr and the last prompt before we have to decide between these two historical fiction books is ooh, a book set in a big city i know i have some but i just don't know what so let's go through them really quickly Big city, big city, big city. Give it to me. What do we have? Twilight Sleep, Edith Wharton, but it doesn't say where it takes place. Oh, I know. Okay, here we go. We are going to do Walking on the Ceiling by Asagal Savas. This takes place in Paris. There we go. Um, it's this woman named Nunu who moves to Paris um, leaving her childhood home of Istanbul and she finds a British writer whose novels about Istanbul she's always admired and then they become friends and they just walk Paris at night talking about life and literature. Romantic, moody, calming. I feel like this is gonna be a calming book. I love this cover. It's just I've been really yearning to read this one. So I'm gonna pop this one right here. Okay given what we have here I'm feeling a lot of atmospheric vibes, a lot of moodiness. So I'm not seeing a whole lot of fun <laughs> other than Cheese Sweet Home, which is what, gonna take me half an hour to read? They're all gonna be beautiful, but not necessarily like fun. So for, for shits and giggles, we are gonna read Queen Victoria Demon Hunter by A.E. Murat. We're gonna add this. It's gonna be fun, it's gonna be a romp, historical fiction. I feel like it's gonna be so fun and bizarre. I mean, come on. Again, this cover, it's stunning. So we're gonna have that. So there we have it, friends. That is my very eclectic, weird February TBR. We have some classics on there, Candide, Middlemarch, The Bluest Eye. We have a memoir slash nonfiction. We have some uh, historical fiction on here with both Tempriere's Dictionary and Queen Victoria Demon Hunter. We have some literary fiction, Walking on the Ceiling and Clade and Mr. Fox. And then we got a graphic novel, Cheese Sweet Home. This is a beautiful stack. I'm so excited. I cannot wait to read these and tell you all my thoughts in the vlogs and wrap ups for February. So thank you all so incredibly much for being here, friends. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's so much fun. I'm just like ah, admiring this beautiful stack. Middle March has to happen. If I don't finish it by March 2022, I'm gonna be pissed, okay? So hold me accountable, please. <laughs> Thank you all so much for being here. I hope you're doing really well. I hope you enjoyed this video. I would love to hear what you are going to be reading in the month of February. If you play along with this TBR jar, let me know what picks came up for you with these prompts. I would really, really love to hear. I'm sorry if I did you dirty with like the longest book and the oldest book. We had a lot of superlatives going on, so... Thank you all again so very much. I hope you're doing well. I hope you stay well. And I can't wait to see you all again very soon for my next video. Stay cozy, my friends. Bye!